Chillin' down, everybody. It's your boy. My high flow and always smoking every chocolate bucket. Who's he token? Tuna back in for another banger. Well, I don't know if it's a banger because I've never done a song by either of these gentlemen. It was sent to me in a, uh, I know it was an Instagram uh, message. It was like a group message situation. And I was like, That's, it's an interesting title. This is, I'm going to just tell you, be straight up. The title is what caught my attention. Um, let's just record the screen real quick. I'm going to hit the full screen. It's called Stop Blaming the White Man by Naka featuring Sir J. And yeah, I just want, let's just get into this, bro. That title, that title alone is what caught me. I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to say that I disagree with that title. I can't say that I agree with that title. Let's just get into this song. I, I ain't going to say nothing. Let's just get into this, bro. See what you're talking about. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Look, I was going to. I, <laughs> it caught me off guard. The so obviously Naka is the dude who's rapping. This is his song. Sir J is the guy who was singing in the beginning. And what caught me off guard was him saying that, and I'm like, man, you may not be white. He's probably not white for real. I don't know what he is. But I'm going to say, I'm going to assume, I'm going to make the assumption that he's, he's probably not white, but he looks white. You know what I'm saying? So him saying, I was like, bro, I'm already, this song is already lost me, dog. Like, but then the other dude comes on and he's in the whole like prison get up situation. Like, uh, what's that movie? Life. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sitting there doing, you know what I'm saying? And that caught my attention. And then I was like, oh, wait, hold up. And what he just said was real. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody talk about, you know, they want to blame the white man, but they work for somebody ultimately. They work for a white man ultimately. You know what I'm saying? And then when they make their money, instead of turning around and investing in themselves, their community and, and their people and, and things that will benefit their communities and their people, they go and spend it on expensive luxury brands that nine times out of 10, nine and a half times out of 10 are owned by white people. So I get it. Like that was like that I can't argue with. And that was where when I was saying I had I feel I feel it. That's I feel that exact way about certain that situation. So yeah, let's just let's go. Cause he caught my attention now. Who held us back? Now we hindering ourselves. Well about Hold up, hold up. We gotta we gotta go back. I wanna hear that again. Go spend it on white brands, the truth already bent. We bend it in ourselves. White people held us back. Now we hindering ourselves. Well about who clothes mm. better. We ignorant ourselves. Can't keep blaming white people. We do it to ourselves. Complain about our problems. We can fix that shit ourselves. Forty acres in the mule. We can get that shit ourselves. Mm. White people ain't the enemy. Let's take accountability. Shot the same out three times. Call it a trilogy. Niggas out here beefing with niggas they went to school with. How you exchange bullets with people you was cool with? I shoot a black man. We run into his projects. That's real shit and basically he's just talking about is like you know the reality is is that we tear each other down more than anybody else does at this point you know what i'm saying is there a history of other people tearing us down for sure but we didn't make it any better but on the flip side of that coin you can go to argue that like a lot of us ain't taught any better it's a lot of us don't know any better a lot of us don't know how to do anything different um you know what I'm saying? There's always a flip side of a coin, but you can keep flipping that coin and being like, well, but this, 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 and this, and you can flip the coin again. You know what I'm saying? This is one of those those arguments that like, you just got to kind of figure it out your, your way. You know what I'm saying? Because you can always sit there and argue with somebody about something like this. I shoot a black man, all we do is protest. You be up in every club, spending money falling. I be on my couch, reading James Baldwin. True fans, mm. niggas too lazy to go and do shit. Right. Laying low and looking for money, not your excuses. Couple black people that I fuck with from a distance. We hate the government, but get government assistance. You ain't doing mm. what you get in the past, so why do you do it? I ain't blaming no white man for my failures, and I don't blame the judge for the time I did. And that's real. That right there, that's something like I, I like what he all he just said right there, bro. Like, I don't believe that about all 
black people by any means that like they won't get up and go get it because i know people of all races who are lazy as shit but the reality is man like a lot of people just they they get stuck in this like very simple-minded situation where like they just don't know any better they don't they never grasp the idea that there's more outside of the you know two three block radius that they usually grow up on and most of the time die on you know what i'm saying and it, it's just it's sad to think that bro like if more of us started to just take responsibility for ourselves, our own actions, our own situations and lives, we'd be able to, you know what I'm saying? Get a lot further as, you know, a community. And then not only that, if we stop tearing each other down, when we see somebody doing better than us and we start learning from it and gaining motivation from that and, and you know, championing that type of situation, there would be a lot more people who wouldn't be afraid of trying to make it out. You know what I'm saying? And there'd be a lot more examples of how to make it out, which in return would create a lot more successful people um, from the different communities that it, at one point were, you know, considered the, the, the end basically before it even started. So I really do feel what he's saying. Like this is, this is a very deep song. You know what I'm saying? This is definitely one of those ones. Like I said, it's, it's a, it's a talker. This is, this is a song that gets you thinking. It gets you to understand that, you know, yes, as much as you want to point a finger, I like every time you point a finger, think of it this way. Every time you point a finger, man, you got three, four fingers pointed back at you. You dig what I'm saying? From your own hand. <laughs> like you sit there and point a finger. It's like, Oh, my other fingers is pointing at me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just take responsibility for yourself and know that you're doing everything in your fucking power to change your situation and better yourself, your life. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, and things should change. And if there's outside forces that you can't manipulate and things like that, you know, well, now it's time to start changing policies and laws and regulations and everything else. You dig what I'm saying? Start putting action behind things and use your resources to make change so that people underneath you won't see the same hurdles that you did because you've already found the hurdles and you found ways to break them down. You dig what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm just saying, it's, 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 it's deep. But let's, let's continue. This is a long story. To be honest, I should have never did the crime I did. That's real. That's real. I should have never did the crimes that I did. Running on the streets. Running on the streets. That's fast, yo. That's a powerful last statement. And the reason I'm going to say that right there, and I'm going to say that's a powerful statement, change your, he said, don't blame the white man, nigga, blame your household, nigga. And that's, that's just real, bro. And I say that that's just real. Hold on one second. Hello? Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, did you talk to my mom already? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my bad. I was doing reactions. I'm going to tell you. Uh, oh, I guess I'll just call her. What time do you need the truck? Like four. Four? Yeah, four or oh, 430. Okay. Oh, and then the fatter the fupa, the tastier the chalupa. That's gross. Okay, come on. I gotta, I'm trying to do this reaction. Love you, bye. <laughs> Love you, bye. All right. All right, I'm back. Um, But yeah, the, the thing about why I'm going to say that that shit's super real is because um, I've literally been learning and reading so much about like financial literacy, bro, and and trying to just understand more about how money turns and works and how that whole system even kind of like came about. You know what I'm saying? And how we even like came to be where we are with money. 
And one of the biggest things that I can say is that no one ever taught me how to manage money, how to really understand money, like how to make money work for me and not work for money. And because of that, it caused the vicious cycle in generation after generation after generation where people are constantly working for money and no one ever gets ahead. All it takes is for one person to just take the sac the time and make the sacrifices to learn and to do to change the entire course of their family's situation. And that's what he's saying right there, bro. Like it, it it's not about this like oh my gosh, I won the lottery and that's going to change my life. The reason why a lot of people who win the lottery don't have money two, three years later is because they don't know how to manage that money. They don't know how to make that money work for them so they never have to work for money again. They don't understand what to do with this money. So they sit there and spend it and blow it and think that it's just going to be there forever. And then two, three years later, they're in the same position that they were right before they made all that money winning the lottery. Like, so... The more you understand money and how it works and how to make it work for you, the better you are. You know what I'm saying? And that's all he's saying, bro. Like it, it starts with you and your family first before you could ever blame the people outside of, of it. You know what I'm saying? Because there are definitely ways and things that you could do that are, are just up to you doing them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just the reality. But I do feel what he's saying. That's that's a real statement. The human race is the only race. Bars. This is by the way they grew up. Is Zimmerman still alive? Yeah, we think that we tough. Yeah, I'm melanin, baby. But it's irrelevant, baby. We yell, fuck the police, and they tell us we crazy. Fuck conspiracy theorists, I hate what you promote. Ironically, I was sleeping, when y'all was screaming, y'all woke. I told them to focus up. They think it's a joke. My photo, you niggas next. Get your knee out my throat. I'm gone. I'm gone. I should never did the crimes that I did. Mm. Running on the street. This is a powerful song, it's deep. I still don't know how I feel about him singing that chorus part. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I still don't know how I feel about him <coughs> singing that that chorus, but I do really like the song. I'm not gonna lie. I just I, I honest I just think that song that would have been a little bit more powerful with somebody else singing it personally. Like I I, I think it kind of took from it a little bit in my opinion with Sir J singing it. Not that he can't sing or anything like that. Not to take anything from him. But I, I think it kind of just it, it like I said it, it like from the beginning it just kind of had me rubbed me the wrong way a little bit him saying what he was saying and everything but I get it you know what I'm saying I get the point of it and why he did it and the purpose of it and everything but I do think that it would have been a little bit more impactful to have someone who was black perhaps doing that part and just saying that part and then him saying everything he said Naka like still doing his verses the same way and like it was very impactful the way it is but I think it could have just hit a little bit harder if. You know, yeah. But anyways, y'all let me know what y'all thought about that down in the comments below, man. I feel like we definitely uh, said we had to say. And yeah, I want to know what y'all have to say now. Let me know what you feel, what you think. Because I know this one's going to be one of those, those talkers, those controversy ones. One of those ones that makes people be like, what? You know what I'm saying? So let me know what you think. All right, I'll catch you on the next one.